what's happening in Leathercraft world. This is your favorite leather craftsman, the leather cowboy from Premier Leathercraft is right here in the Dirty South. The Dirty South is where I lay my head. And we're going to be showing you guys another tutorial videos. Now, this one here is really just basically a uh, how to improve your work uh, and make your work look a little bit more professional um, as it, as you continue to grow. Now, this one here is specifically for the uh, those of you who are into belt making. Now, you have found your niche into... Um, making leather belts and this video is going to improve your craftsmanship and the overall appearance of your your leather belts tremendously now that is simply by knowing and understanding how to make the perfect belt keeper now there are several um things that's out there available today uh yeah you can go buy a bag of belt keepers from uh, wh whoever you're buying your leather supplies from, be it Tandy Springfield, Weaver, or uh, uh, High Crafters. I don't even know if High Crafters is still in business. I need to check to see if they're still in business. High Crafters is out of Fort Worth. Um, I used to buy a lot of stuff early on, but then as I start transitioning more to becoming a Tandy guy, then um, uh, I just pretty much stop ordering from everybody else, unless... I can get me a good a good deal. And then I would, you know, hey, Tandy and I have a love-hate relationship. You know, sometimes they act a little stubborn, you know, and, and, and they make me want to go and cheat on them. You know, they literally make me go and cheat on them by going to somebody else and getting a better deal. But uh, you can buy belt keepers from any of the um, leather craft stores. Uh, or suppliers that's out there in the country today or even in the world and you can go buy a bag of them now belt keepers really uh, to me you should never buy a belt keeper a belt keeper you should never be in that position to where you have to buy belt keepers but um it, it can improve your work a lot, but they do sell the pre pre-made belt keepers, which I'm going to show you how to make your own. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to make them perfectly to wear on any belt. Now you can make different sizes depending on the belts that you make. So you can go anywhere from a one inch belt keeper to an inch and a quarter, inch and a half, all the way up to a two inch or inch and three quarters. I don't think your belt loops are bigger than two inches. So if you're buying anything over the, over uh, an inch and a quarter or inch and three quarter belt, that's what we call a utility belt. And, and, and those are pretty wide, like your fireman belts or your police officer belt uh, or uh, a plumber or something, a belt that's in a two belt. You know, that that's pretty wide. But most generally, if you are in the belt making category, then you're pretty much the rule of thumb. Now, all I make is uh, my belts are majority an inch and a half. That's pretty much standard to me. Um, now, if somebody wants, I can make other size belts, but then those, uh, when I take those orders, then I will make a belt keeper for those at the time that I'm making them. So by the time I finish with the belt, whether it's a one inch or an inch and a quarter, then my keeper is already formed and shaped. But um, now let me tell you to do this because you really don't know what size or what width a belt that the customer wants until they put the order in. So you, it would be a good thing to do to have to make you three of these. You want one. Now this one here is an inch and a half, inch and a half belt. Uh, so you can make you one that's one inch for your one inch belts. Most one inch belts are going to be your pretty much your dress belt. A dress belt is one inch. Some casual belts are one inch, but most most men, when they buy a belt, they don't have the average man don't have two or three different belts. He might have he might have two. But we're not in that time frame of when I was growing up, you know, where you had church clothes and then you had your casual clothes, right? 
So, yes, we had two different belts at that particular point in time. But now, uh, as I see a lot of stuff that's on social media now, they're basically wearing blue jeans to church. <laughs> I mean, their dress clothes and their casual clothes are the same. Even if you're going out to a casual party or semi-casual, semi-formal event, the, the styles have changed so much, but I'm just old school. So if you are, are but you, you will be making belts for people of different genres and different uh, uh, styles, periods of time and style. So you still got a lot of old school cats like me that have a dress belt, a casual belt, and then a work belt. And then uh, if I'm going to a formal event, then most times I'm wearing suspenders, uh, but that's, a whole different world right there. Um, but let's get to this. So what I'm going to tell you guys to do in this little quick tutorial is you can go ahead and pre-make belt keepers. Now, this is my pre-made belt keepers. As you can see, some of them are colored. Some are just natural. Now, I, may, I, may, I started making these because I was getting thin. Uh, I was down to just the three different color ones. So I just started making me some additional belt keepers that I can have on standby. Now, this is one thing that you guys can do in your spare time is make belt keepers. So if you're down, uh, if you don't have any work going on, if you don't have a lot of work going on, depending on you, um, what you can do is go back to your scrap band box and find you where you've cut the end off of a belt that you've made. And what you want to do is glue two of these together. You can see these are two scrap pieces glued together. And this is the one, one again, this is the one and a half. And what I did, I went and I had some um, three ounce, three, you can use three to four, three to four ounce leather that I cut down into straps or uh, strips. And then all I did was wrap them around, around my, my belt keeper, um, well, my former, this is what I call a former, and then I stapled that into the leather. Now, stapling this into the leather is not going to hurt anything because, again, this is just to form those belt keepers. And now, as you can see, how it's forming. So, uh, I'm going to pull one of these off so you guys can see how this works. Well, let me back up first. Uh, when you're making this, once you get them cut down into your strips, you should have a strap in cutter. You want, if you don't have a strap in cutter, you want to get you one. You definitely need this piece of equipment or this tool in your arsenal. Now, I've had mine a long time. You can tell it's going through a beating. I've, I've kept kept it together with set screws and all of that kind of stuff. But this is a strap-in cutter. And what you want to do is adjust the width. Most of, uh, all of my belt keepers are a half inch wide. And the blade is in here. So when you put this onto a piece of leather, let me just show you guys this real fast. Uh, you'll put that scrap piece in there and then you'll just pull it. And it cuts it, you keep the leather up against the block, and it cuts it straight. And this is how I make all of my belt keepers. So I cut them down to these half inch strips. And then once I do that, I'll come here, true up the corner. You see it's kind of weird shape. I want to square that corner off and just cut a straight line. Let me angle this video down so I won't have to keep holding this up. So I've cut my strap, my end off straight. And I'm going to place it here in the center of my, my former and wrap it around this. Now, before I wrap this around here, this is what you want to do. And this is very key here. You want to uh, get you a bowl of water and you want to pull this strip inside into that water. And it's going to be soaked on all the way around, all the way through it. You want to soak this in that water. And uh, while it's wet, then you want to put it onto your former. Now, make up a whole strip of these. Um, so that way you can get all of them done at one time. 
and then you can uh, now you can punch you a hole. I don't um, I didn't punch a hole, but if you have a pegboard in your shop, punch you a hole in here, hang it up on your pegboard, let it dry out naturally. Let them dry out naturally, um, and you want to just fill this thing up. Uh, then you can go to your one inch former, do the same thing. Go to your inch and a quarter or your, your inch and three quarters, do the same thing. That way, when you're making belts, this is not a worry for you. And it's already formed perfectly to how you need it. Now, let me show you guys the greatest part about this. And this is why I love doing it. Um, and then we'll get to, let me just pull one of these staples out. Now, this is the best part. So when you get ready to use it, this is what you will have, a perfectly formed belt keeper. Then all you would have to do at that point, if you so choose to do it at that point, dye the edges and then dye the keeper that is the same color as the belt. Then once you put this onto the belt, Once you put this onto the belt, like I've done on this one, and it's the same thing, uh, you slip it over the edge, over the tip, pull it down in between the two holes here. These are your set holes or snaps. Put your buckle on and then close it up. And however you fasten that with snaps or rivets uh, is going to be completely done. And then you can see it keeps that perfect rectangular shape. So you can do uh, finish off your belt. Now, this is not, I mean, is, is it paramount to do? No. Um, is this a must do? No. But to keep your, your belt keeper from losing its shape, I would suggest this is something that will just make your work just top notch. Now, the other thing that I want to, uh, that I want to bring up is, if you don't want to dye it at that particular point in time, however many different colors of dye that you have. No, I'm going to, not, not that many, because that's a lot, because I have a lot of dye bottles. Um, blacks and your three shades of brown, whether it is medium brown, uh, light brown, medium brown, or dark brown. Those are going to be your popular browns. Um, and black, always going to be black. Now, you can go ahead and make these. And go ahead and dye them after they dry it out. Go ahead and dye them. And then now you have a former full of brown, light brown, medium browns, dark browns, and then you have a former full of blacks. So when you're making your belt, all you have to do then is go and pull the appropriate uh, color former. Boom. Belt keeper is done. Out the way. And it's a great way to utilize some of the scrap that you have in your box by making these formers here. These, this, this is a must. Uh, I mean, for me, it's a must. I mean, I, I don't know to do anything else other than uh, when I have some time, I'm going to sit back and make some of these up. And it just gets my time, not to make, make me do the belt any faster, but I can complete the work a lot faster. So that's all to this one, ladies and gentlemen, is just how to form that perfect belt keeper. And this is something that you guys can do. Put this into your arsenal and put them back. So this is one less thing that you have to worry about, and it keeps that shape. Uh, and there's nothing better now. The ones that they sell uh, in your supply store, that's just all. That's all that they did. This is all that they done. Now they might not have went this route to making the out of scrap. Uh, I'm pretty sure they have a former that they can use uh, to make these. But this is just an inexpensive way to put money back into your, your coffers. Uh, put money back into that. Uh, and it's by utilizing the scrap that you already have. All right? And then you can go ahead and pre-dye those and have those ready to rock and roll whenever you need them. The only other thing that I would think that you would possibly do is if you made different size widths, then you want to have different size widths in these colors. So you can have two or uh, three. If you're doing a one inch, you got a one inch former, an uh, inch and a quarter former, inch and a half former, or inch and three quarter former, and you can put all these onto the same peg 
on your board, and that's all black. And then you got your all your browns, your, your different color browns. Now, what would happen, cowboy, if somebody wants a ox blood belt? When I know the color that they are going to make, again, now I have some blanks here. These are not dyed. So now I will go and dye one in ox blood, put it back on the former, and staple it and leave it there. And then when I get ready to when I finish the belt, then I can take that former, put it onto the belt, and restaple it. Uh, uh, once I get it onto the belt, I'm gonna not staple it to the belt, but you can, uh, when you take this off of here, what I would do then is I would take my staple gun, push my staple gun up in here and get this open a little bit, and then I'll drive my staple in here. Then once I pull this off, bend my prongs back on the staple, and then it's still formed and ready. See how that, man, that is just nice. Perfect rectangular shape, and it's going to be the exact size of the belt that you make. And all you do is slip that on. That's all to it today, ladies and gentlemen. And with this part of the video is how to form the perfect belt keeper. Very inexpensive way to minimize your spending, save some money on the front end, and maximize the profits on your back. Because you don't have to spend any money on a belt keeper. And it has that nice, clean, professional look. Now, the only other thing that you can go if you want to spend your money on that is, and again, it depends on the belt that you're making. Uh, sometimes when I make Ranger belts, uh, I use the silver buckle tip and belt keeper set. And that's because when, when people buy a Ranger belt from me, I mean, they're, they're spending $175 on a Ranger belt. So I want that belt to reflect that, that $175 look. So uh, and then it has a nice polished silver finish to the buckle, the belt keeper, and the tip. They all match. That's when you really start to, that's the only other thing that you, I would spend money on. And it's not just buying the silver keeper, it's buying the buckle and the tip to match. And that's just, and, but I only do that on my Ranger belts. I only do that on a Ranger style belt. Uh, one of these days I'm gonna do a Ranger video and show you guys now, if you want to step your belt game up, <laughs> add Ranger belts to your collection. I'm the Leather Cowboy right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South. I'll see you guys on the next one. You guys stay tuned because I got another video coming out where I am going to be, we're going to step the game up a little bit and start, I'm going to show you guys how to make knife sheaths. And that's going to be a cool video so what? Whew. After I get some sleep. I'll see you guys on the other side. Peace.